Welcome to Online Church here at St Jude's Randwick on this third Sunday in Advent. My name is Andrew Schmidt. I'm looking forward to preaching to you later on from the prophet Isaiah. We've decided that we're going to wrap up these regular online services at Christmas. So we'll do one more service next Sunday for the fourth Sunday in Advent. We'll put a Christmas service online and then after that we'll go back to putting on the sermon each week and also some irregular online content which we hope will be encouraging to you. So Christmas will be our last regular Sunday uh, but we do really thank you for being involved in these online services and we hope that you'll continue to be encouraged by what we keep putting up on the web in 2021. The good news is uh, that you may have heard that the COVID restrictions have lifted which means we're now allowed to sing in church and this is happening just in time for our Christmas services which are going to be very busy. This afternoon uh, we have our carols at St Jude's, our first ever outdoor carols event which we're running along with the family fun day and barbecue and that should be great fun. It's from 4 till 7 p.m. this afternoon. And then we have next Sunday, the 20th of, uh, of December, we have lessons and carols at 7.30 p.m. with the church decked out in candles. And over Christmas, we have our family Christmas celebration at 6 p.m. We have uh, communion services at 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve and also at 8 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. on Christmas Day. Please note our Christmas Day service times are 8 a.m. and 9.30 a.m., whereas our regular Sunday service is now at 10 a.m., but it's 8 and 9.30 for Christmas. Well, I hope that we can see you at one or more of those services, but right now, let's head into church. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 19. O people in Zion who dwell at Jerusalem, you shall weep no more. The Lord will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. He will cause his majestic voice to be heard. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light things now hidden in darkness and judge the secrets of our hearts. Let us then open our hearts and prepare for his coming, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. God the Son, 
Redeemer of the world, have, have mercy, mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, giver of light and life, have, have mercy, mercy on us. For accepting life yet living it without you, forgive, forgive us, us, Lord. For living without concern for others, forgive, forgive us, us, Lord. For failing to glorify your holy name, forgive, forgive us, Lord. For disobeying your will and commandments, forgive, forgive us, us, Lord. For refusing to love and forgive others, forgive, forgive us, Lord. Lord. For turning the world to our own purposes and desires, forgive, forgive us, us, Lord. That in all things we may hold to your will and purpose. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. us. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday in Advent. Almighty God, we pray that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered through your guidance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 7. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Strangers will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, 
but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. It seems to be widely agreed that 2020 has not been the greatest year. Eleven months ago, we were in the midst of one of the worst ever bushfire seasons, so that even here in Randwick, we were experiencing such a smoky atmosphere that we didn't want to be outside. You might remember in January, we held two prayer meetings here, asking God to end the bushfire crisis and to send rain. At that time in late January, we had heard of COVID-19, but almost no one had any idea what havoc it was going to be wreaking on our lives by March. On Sunday the 22nd of March, we had planned one of those exciting and intensely busy church days, the sort of days you shouldn't plan for every Sunday, but they come up once in a while. Following our two morning services, we were to hold the dedication of our new playground in our early learning center, with our local member having been invited to come along. We were also going to hold Coral Evensong in the afternoon, followed by our usual evening service. Well, that 22nd of March was the day that, in light of the COVID-19 restrictions, the Archbishop asked us to stop gathering in person, asked all of the churches in our diocese to stop gathering in person. So instead of a day full of activity, the church was empty. I wondered whether there had ever been a Sunday since 1865 in which there was no service held inside this building. It was the week after our annual vestry meeting in which I had reaffirmed my vision to fill the church and the church was empty. That was depressing. But there was a task before us which was to continue feeding God's people with his life-giving word using every means possible, gathering by every means possible, uh, and that basically meant online. Now, I think it's probably true for most churches that that was an energizing challenge, and I think people's determination to keep church going uh, in whatever way they could, it really demonstrated the vitality of the Christian church in an era when many people think that Christianity is losing ground. Actually, I think it's every era in which people think that Christianity is losing ground, but because of Jesus' promise, I will build my church, it keeps on going. Well, there are many people in our community for whom this COVID year has been exceptionally hard. It's affected people's livelihoods. For many who live alone or who are in aged care, it's put them in a state of isolation that has been very bad for mental health. It's exacerbated some very difficult family and household situations, and that's not even to mention those who've been gravely ill or lost their lives because of the virus. But I have to confess, I still don't know personally anyone who has had the virus. And I think for me and for most of those that I know personally, this year has been different and challenging, but not an experience of walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I wonder how you would describe your own COVID experience. And if it's true that by the grace of God, we're already through the worst of it, I wonder how deep a valley it has been for you. The reason for me reflecting at such length about COVID is because I'm still wrestling with how I can bring the words of Isaiah the prophet to you today as truly prophetic words, words which break into our lives with a seismic disruption because they are the very words of God. I mean, COVID has definitely been disciplined for us, but has it been stern enough discipline so that we are really ready for the words of a prophet? 
is a discipline which has brought us to the end of our resources so that we will be hanging off whatever gracious word from God we might be able to hear. Because you see, this vision of Isaiah, this is a vision for those who have been brought to the end of their resources, who have nothing to offer but their own weakness. In this vision, in chapter 61, Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord's servant. He heard the voice of the one that God would appoint as his agent to implement God's justice. Listen to what the servant says, Isaiah 61, verse 1. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Good news to the poor. Are we the poor? Reading on, it says, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Are we the brokenhearted? To proclaim freedom from the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Are we captives? Are we prisoners? Now, maybe the answer is yes. Maybe some of us do feel that way. Maybe some of us do feel brokenhearted. Maybe through COVID or through whatever other life circumstances, we do feel at the very end of our resources. It's just that I want us to notice that this good news announced by the Lord's servant in Isaiah's vision is for people who have no other hope. The year of the Lord's favour, in verse 2, is a reference to the year of Jubilee, which the law of Moses required the people of Israel to practice, although it's not clear whether they ever actually did practice this year of Jubilee. But, but in the year of Jubilee, which took place every 50 years, all debts were cancelled. Everyone who had had to sell land got to reclaim their family property, return to their family property. And every Israelite who had had to sell themselves into slavery to pay their debts got to walk free. The year of Jubilee was proclaimed by the blowing of trumpets. Now that same year of the Lord's favour is also, according to Isaiah 61 verse 2, the day of God's vengeance. You see, this restoration, this restoration to justice would come through judgment. The good news was above all for the slaves. Are we slaves? Now, I'm not trying to make us feel that these blessings are not for us, but I'm just saying, let's notice who they're for. They're for people who have come to the very end of their own resources, for slaves and for captives. You see, no self-respecting prophet is going to go around making people who are already comfortable feel good about themselves. That is just not what prophets do. I really believe in the saying that the word of God should comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Now, I've got to say to you, I consider myself often to be amongst the comfortable. In a worldly sense, I'm not poor, I'm not a captive, I'm not a mourner. Now, perhaps you are those things, or you might also feel a little the way I do. If that's the case, how could this vision of the Lord's servant be for us? What could the Lord's servant have to offer us? Well, partly, don't you think, the coming of this servant would point out where the rest of the human race has fallen short. When he comes to bind up the brokenhearted, shouldn't it occur to us that, well, his very fact of binding up the brokenhearted might show where we had failed to do that. Failed to bind up the brokenhearted amongst us. I'm thinking about the man who lived among the graves, recorded in Mark chapter 5. No one could do anything for this man who was just a picture of of human misery. No one could help him. But when Jesus came, 
he was able to help this man. So much so that people were afraid when they saw the way Jesus had restored him. Isaiah chapter 59 is is all about how God saw human society, that there was no justice in it. And it explains that God has decided that he will personally step in and bring justice himself. Now, the vision of the servant in chapter 61 is the vision of the one God, the the one that God will appoint to carry out that mission of stepping into an unjust world and bringing justice. So when that person steps in, it it can't help but be a challenge and a disruption and even an offence. You might know that when Jesus was in his hometown of Nazareth, at the beginning of his ministry, he was at the synagogue and he stood up to read. They handed him the scroll of Isaiah and he turned to this passage, to Isaiah chapter 61, and he read out the words, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight to the blind. Luke records that when he rolled up the scroll and sat down, every eye in the synagogue was fastened on him. And he said, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus understood very clearly that these words were about him. He is the servant to implement God's justice. But by the end of that day in the synagogue, the people were furious at him. They drove him out of the town, and it's not difficult to see why. You think you're better than us, do you, Jesus? The one who'd grown up amongst them and was Joseph's son. A similar thing happened another time. This is recorded in John chapter 8, when Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And again, the people were offended. Are you saying we're not free? We're sons of Abraham, they said. We've never been slaves of anyone. But Jesus replied that everyone who sins is a slave of sin. And it is in that sense, as sinners, that Without Jesus, we are the poor, we are the captives, and if we understand that, then we are also those who mourn, who mourn at our own sin, who mourn at the sin of the society around us and at our inability to create a just society, certainly our inability to create a society or a life that is pleasing to our Heavenly Father. I've tried to read the whole of Isaiah these last few weeks, and there's a beautiful verse in chapter 57 where God says, For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry, because the Spirit would grow faint before me and the breath of life that I made. And very briefly, what that means is that God does not want to overwhelm us with sorrow. God does not want to overwhelm us with sorrow, As he points out our sin, he pointed out the sins of the people of Israel in chapter after chapter of the book of Isaiah. But in doing so, he does not want to make our spirits grow faint. Maybe that's why this COVID discipline, for many of us, stopped short of bringing us into the valley of the shadow of death. But if we don't recognise that sin makes us poor and captive, and that human society without Christ is not a just society, well, we're just not living in reality. The good news is not for the comfortable, but for the poor in spirit. Shall we pray? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for pointing out to us so clearly and yet so gently and mercifully that in our sin 
we have not been able to create a just society, nor just lives which are pleasing to you. We thank you so much that you sent your Son into the world to implement your plan of justice. We thank you that Jesus understood that that was his mission, that he understood that he is the one whom your Spirit had anointed to bring justice, to free the captives, to open the eyes of the blind. Father, we ask for ourselves that we would understand our own situation soberly, that we would not be comfortable or to think that our lives without the help of Jesus are, are just or satisfying to you. But Father, we pray that we might humble ourselves before you and come to you as the poor in spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us declare our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs>
to die for us and to give us life in all its fullness. We thank you that we can hold out this good news of great joy at Christmas. And we pray especially for our St Jude's Carols event this afternoon. Please, Lord, in your kindness, might you give us good weather and safety. And may all who come feel warmly welcomed, have an enjoyable time, and receive the hope and life you offer all people through your Son, Jesus. We also thank you, Lord God, that such an event is even possible with the lifting of restrictions and the easing of the coronavirus here in New South Wales. Lord, we do continue to pray for parts of the world that are still struggling with the pandemic and its effects, but we thank you for lessening the burden here, especially as Christmas approaches. Father, we pray that you might keep us mindful of both those in need and those who serve us to meet our needs. And so we thank you for our Queen Elizabeth and Governor General David Hurley and those who serve our country in various divisions of the armed forces. Please equip them all with diligence and integrity, strength and wisdom to carry out their duties faithfully. And please work through their leadership and acts of service for the good of many. We also pray, Lord, for those who serve to advance your kingdom by sharing your word with others. We pray in thanks for the Bible Society and the many different and creative ways that they make your word accessible to people in many different places. We pray for your spirit to do a powerful work in people's hearts, causing them to turn from sin and to trust in your son for eternal life. And Lord, as we remember the power of your word to teach, rebuke, correct and train us in righteousness, we give you thanks for the different ministries among young people that happen at St Jude's, including Kids Club, Playgroup, Sunday School and Youth. And we especially pray for the youth today, thanking you for Andrew's leadership throughout this year and all the ways that the youth have grown in knowledge and love of you. Lord, we ask for safety and continued opportunities to connect with the youth over the school holidays and ask that you might bring them back again next year to continue learning about you in community. We thank you, Father, that you hear our prayers and that you delight to give your children good gifts. Please help each of us here to grow in our trust in you each day and to humbly come to you with our needs, knowing that you are good and powerful to meet them. And Lord, for those named in our parish prayer journal, we ask that your compassion and kindness might be upon them and that they might be filled with the joy and peace that comes from knowing you. We pray all of this in the name of our Saviour and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for all people and for the church throughout the world. We pray for the peace of the world, the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the welfare of your holy church, our Archbishop Glenn, our Bishop Michael, our Rector Andrew, and for all the clergy and people. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that we may share with justice the resources of the earth and live in trust and goodwill with one another. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the aged and the infirm, for the bereaved and the lonely, and for the sick and suffering. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor and the oppressed, for prisoners and captives, and for all who care for them. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and for each other, our families, those with whom we work and learn, our neighbours and our friends. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to share in the Lord's Supper, hear these words of welcome and these words of warning from the Scriptures. 
The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. As often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, let a person examine themselves and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Let us pray together. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. All glory and honour, thanks and praise be yours now and always, Lord, Holy Father, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who was looked for by the prophets, heralded by the Baptist, announced by an angel, born of the Virgin Mary, and it revealed at last to men and women of every race. In him the day of our deliverance has dawned. We rejoice that through him you make all things new, and we look for his coming in power and majesty to judge the world. For by his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Pray that we who receive these your gifts of bread and wine, according to our Saviour's word, may be partakers of his body and blood. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, his almighty Father, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. We offer our prayer and praise, Father, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We who are many are one body in Christ, for we all share in the one bread. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. And drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Amen. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, we thank you that you feed us who have received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the body and blood of our Saviour Jesus Christ. We thank you for this assurance of your goodness and love, and that we are living members of his body and heirs of his eternal kingdom. As we joyfully await your Son, keep us ever watchful that we may be ready to stand before him on the day of his coming. Sanctify us completely, that our whole spirit, soul and body may be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen.
Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.